the Boo, good evening Philippines. It's open mic night again, and tonight we have a very special guest. Someone I uh, hold very in very high regard. Uh, she was and still is the first woman governor of the province of Cebu, and she is currently the third district congresswoman of uh, the province. Uh, very controversial sometimes. <laughs> very Interesting. Feisty, very sexy. The smallest, uh, I think the only competition she has to the smallest waistline in the world is her daughter, Christina. <laughs> <laughs> None other than Congresswoman, Governor, I don't know what to call you. Call me Gwen. Gwen Garcia. Hi, Hi. Mike. Thank you for uh, accepting my invitation. Thank you for having me. I felt so uh, flattered when it's, you asked me to so, be your guest. She, she was so funny when I called her, uh, inviting her to the show. Uh, she was very humble. She said, Mike, I'm very flattered and flabbergasted. Flabbergasted was the word that I used. Yes, uh, you, you burst into alliteration. <laughs> <laughs> and then you said that uh, after Senator Grace Poe and after Ding Dong Dantes, who are you? I mean, I think, and then I told her, I had to tell her, do not sell yourself short because you have been Gwen Garcia for a long time already and you have solid achievements for the province. Well, I feel very honored considering my uh, predecessors in your show, in this very, very popular show, and especially since it's the Mike Lopez oh, who's going on. to interview me. <laughs> no, but it was really funny because when I was, when, when Senator Grace Poe was seated right where you are, I was interviewing her, and you were actually calling me. And Wasn't that serendipity? It was serendipity, and I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I was going to cut her and, or answer the phone. But then, then you wanted to clarify something that came out in Rappler uh, about the visit of the three candidates, well, presumptive candidate for, in the case of uh, uh, Senator Grace Poe for president. And they were all here in Cebu a few weeks ago. And there were, uh, incidentally, a Rappler article came out that said that, uh, what was quoting actually, an old, it was an old quote from Grace Poe that said that uh, it's painful what, uh, what happened here in 2004. And you wanted to clarify something. But, as per her recent pronouncements... And may I quote her in this case? Let's all yes. move on. Yes, she said, let's all move on. So we have moved on. I certainly have. Uh, and you have moved on so beautifully. Thank you. Again, and coming from Mike Lopez. <laughs> no, but I always tell you, it's like you walk... She walks around with diva lights. You know what diva lights are? Boya Bunda uh, educated me on what diva lights are. Uh, they're lights that are... That, uh, that shine from, from down here so that you look uh, slim and beautiful and it's very flattering. Should we lower the lights? Um, so that we have diva lights. That, so that we will all look slim and flattered? Oh, no, you don't, and need, flattering. you don't need to look slim, <laughs> you already are. Um, for the rest of us, yes, we may need that. But I always ask your, your, the state of your love life, no? Are you in love? Is Gwen Garcia in love? I had a column, a birthday of yours, two, I think two years ago. Uh, is Gwen Garcia in love? That was my question then. But mm. now, you have slightly shorter hair. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, is there someone in your life right now that makes you glow like a, like a teenager? Well, you know, I'm always in love. <laughs> With whom? Tita Carmen. No? <laughs> whom? Because a life without love would not be life at all. But can we ask who? A name? Is it the same? <laughs> Is it the same? I heard... I heard I've heard. i always says, been in love. In love with life. In love with my work. Not with someone. In love with all that I'm doing for the Cebuanos. Mm. <laughs> Everyone, we're here. We're here at the My TV Studios and we're being taped with a live audience. But we are very honored to have some of the most uh, celebrated socialites. Gorgeous. Of Cebu. Thank you for lending your uh, presence uh, this afternoon. Tita Carmen, Carmen Campbell. Yes. The feisty <laughs> Carmen Campbell. Never mind, never mind. <laughs> of course, former Miss Cebu, a purveyor of fine furniture, yeah. Nora Sol. And of course, uh, staple, society staple, and producer with you. And then our friend, my friend here, Stefan, all the way, all, all the way from Belgrade in Syria, and a, a nephew of uh, Tita Gwen. 
Miguel Garcia, who is taking up his PhD in the University of Zurich. So we are uh, privileged to have uh, very important supporters. Here. Powerhouse. They're Cast. all here They're to support here. you. And I'm so grateful. Thank you for being here. You're just making me more nervous. I'm so <laughs> afraid that I slip and say something which uh, you might confirm <laughs> or affirm. But you've been blessed. You've always been blessed with having very good friends. And that is truly a blessing. And you prove that was something you were able to prove, no? During uh, that. that was something that my friends were able to prove yes. to me. To you during, during the, the most one of the most difficult times that our family had to go through, and that was when I was suspended for six months. We had to spend Christmas and New Year at the, the capital. capital. The, the capital acquired a garrison-like you know, um, atmosphere with uh, yes, okay. hundreds and hundreds of policemen standing guard uh, with uh, long arms and SWAT ready to uh, you know, attack at any time as though there were a terrorist inside when, who were actually inside <laughs> was just this little me and <laughs> surrounded by my faithful friends, women friends for that matter. It's been a long way no, since 2012. And then you were governor, uh, you were suspended. Uh, for what reason was that? For, for usurpation, that's what... Uh, the I VIP, usurped my own power. Usur you usurped your own power. Mm -hmm. And you were there for 40 days? 42 days. 42 days. Actually. You know, when uh, as time wore on and I could see how uh, you know, it was wearing down my parents they're not that young they I saw them there but they were there days. every day climbing those stairs up to my office um, my own children needing to face you know needing to justify like my friends needing to ask permission of the guards the police that uh, would not allow just anybody inside the office and so I was talking to one friend and I said you know this has really been taking so long I've been in here for 30 days now. And this friend um, replied, hang in there a little more. Jesus stayed in the desert for 40 days. 40 days so 40 days. Uh, I stayed for two more days beyond that. And there were also devils trying to taunt you. <laughs> devils literally and figuratively speaking. <laughs> wager, can you wager a, a name or two? I think the same name that you are thinking about. Oh my God. <laughs> Um, uh, you, have, you are now a uh, congresswoman. Is it a big change from being governor to congresswoman? It's a huge change. For one thing, I think uh, many Cebuanos knew my schedule when I was governor. I uh, started this 25-8 uh, routine, going beyond the 24 hours a day and seven days a week. Yeah. I would say, you know, there are just not enough hours in the day, not enough days in the week for me to be able to finish the work that I need to do for Cebu. And so I would tell everybody, let's work on a 25-8 schedule. Of course, they, everybody knew that uh, I was just kidding. Yeah. Because anybody who'd follow me around uh, for one day would get sick for a week. That was the I, kind of schedule. That happened to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that happened to okay. me. I followed her. And you were not even governor then. I was in the same car and I swear, I held on to dear life and I prayed the act of confession because <laughs> I was ready to go. <laughs> and I just wanted to stop yes. the car, but I was so embarrassed because she was obviously in a rush and I wanted to stop the car and just go down, uh, be offloaded at the uh, Trans Central Highway because I just couldn't take it. And then I couldn't find my balance for two days. <laughs> I had to take CERC. So well, I testified to that. That was really the schedule that I had. Um, I would go around the province, cover probably five, six towns in a day. In the morning, I'd be in the north. Around noontime, I'd be in the western part of Cebu. And in the evening, I'd probably be in uh, Santander. That's the southernmost part of the island. And you did that for nine years? And for nine years, that was what I did. Of course, squeeze in between were all the meetings that I had to conduct, all the courtesy calls that I had to, you know, uh, accommodate. accommodate. And uh, going also to other places to sign sisterhood agreements with uh, other provinces in the country, as well as other regions and other cities outside of the Philippines. Yes. That was a very, very crazy and hectic schedule. Do you miss it? I look back to it with fondness. I look back 
without a tinge of regret, knowing that I did everything that I could, that I had not held back a single ounce of my strength, my energy, my passion, my commitment. I did and gave everything of Juan Garcia then. I ask if you miss it because a lot of people miss you. Am I right? Yeah, a lot of people wonder if you would, and in fact, wish for you to, to run again for governor. Um, and some characterize, maybe he has a different style, but the incumbent, uh, Governor Revida, maybe he has a different style, but some people describe his leadership as kind of ho-hum. I mean, medyo boring, no? Uh, maybe it's his style, maybe he's focused uh, and not very media savvy, I'm not, I don't know, but it was spectacular uh, when you were there. It, it, was, it a, was it a woman's intuition? Was it... I don't know. So, a lot of people miss, no? Uh, miss that, uh, that those nine years when Cebu was uh, fabulous. Well, it's nice to be missed. It's also good that um, a contrast can be uh, <laughs> felt and seen. Yes. Because if there is no contrast, then people would never realize exactly what had happened and what we were able to achieve and what heights we had reached and so um, like every one of us we can always look back to a certain time in our lives that we will always remember with uh, remember fondness and caring and uh, that is what those nine years were for me so you will never more than look back but actually uh, you know, resurrect uh, that time of your life and become governor or want to become governor again. Is that something you would, you would swear that you will never be anymore? No, we can never say, you know, in Tagalog, marunong akong magtagalog ngayon. <laughs> Kasi pumupunta ako doon. <laughs> Tatlong araw, isang simana. <laughs> isang simana. <laughs> simana Santa. <laughs> you know, it, it, they have this saying, huwag kang magsalita ng patapos. patapos oh, mas, mag, mas magaling kang magtagalog sa akin. <laughs> but, and that, I, I believe that. I mean, you know, it is not for us to say what our lives will be. There's an unseen hand that guides the affairs of men. But right now, taking into consideration what I am, what I have uh, been able to learn and uh, achieve in Congress as well, I am going uh, more towards the direction of running for re-election in Congress for my more third. Uh, yes, that is, is my meaning. Or is it final? That is the direction that I'm taking, actually. Because uh, the deadline is fast approaching. Yes, it starts. Well, the deadline is October 16th. Filing of the certificate of candidacy will Your start. Your birthday is four days before that. And that's the first day of the filing of the certificate yeah. of candidacy. So, uh, right now, um, that is the direction we're taking. We are, uh, however, I think it landed in the papers. We are uh, consolidating uh, one Cebu once again. We are trying to uh, strengthen our uh, hold in the different municipalities and cities of the province. And our battle cry is, uh, let us uh, unite to make Cebu number one again. Yeah. Um, this is not us just saying it. I guess you started it, Mike. Uh, <laughs> people now are looking back to the time when Cebu was leading all the other provinces, when Cebu was spectacular, as you said. And I think that is something that Cebu and the Cebuanos deserve. deserve. Yes. Uh, we are, after all, the oldest province in the country. Um, the Spanish uh, civilization, colonization started here. We are at the heart of the country itself. Literally. Literally. Geographically. Yes. And the Cebuanos are a special people. They... Uh, and we deserve nothing. Precisely yet. because we were a hub. Pre-Spanish, even during Spanish times and beyond and we that. Continue. We are a hub. We are an open people that accept those that come to our shores. Except, I remember you'd always joke in your speeches that we killed our first tourist for the non-Majalan. So we are also a brave people and courageous. <laughs> yes. And uh, 
don't mess with us or we just kill you. Good that you qualified that because <laughs> they might uh, think we're all pushovers. We're not. We're not. I think uh, the uh, statue of Magellan there in Lapu-Lapu will be a testament to that. The statue of Lapu-Lapu Lapu -Lapu Lapu. standing on Magellan. <laughs> <laughs> You're soon to kill. Uh, b before we pause for a break, I uh, actually a few hours ago I posted uh, on my Facebook that we're having you uh, for, to for tonight's episode, and uh, there are some questions there that were uh, that were posted. And uh, one question in relation to you know uh, my previous question was from uh, a very popular blogger named Sinjin Pineda. He's a friend of mine. He's uh, called Libotero. He's a travel blogger, and. His question was, if you were to rate the incumbent uh, governor, Governor Davide, uh, in a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being, I, I presume, the lowest and 10 being the highest, how would you rate his performance uh, thus far? You know, um, rating a person depends on the standards that you set. And if you were to uh, ask me to rate the present uh, occupant at the Capitol, in accordance with my standards, then uh, definitely it would have to be a three. Oh my least. gosh, <laughs> three? At least. At, at, least, at, at least. At least, yeah. <laughs> it could go up. Who knows, there are still a few more months few left more before months. his uh, term finishes. He could uh, try and make up. It... <laughs> <laughs> Do you agree? Three? Three? Uh, but uh, which brings me, no? Uh, a few a few weeks ago, when uh, would you like me to justify? Oh yes, yeah, sure, please. Well, I started from the premise of using my standards, and I do not speak of empty words. I do not come with empty words. Mm -hmm. I would like the Cebuanos themselves to stand to to judge me by the standards by which I have set myself. I've always said, "Dili sulti pa buhaton, buhat pa sulti on." In all those nine years, I'd be spending, as I said, you know practically all my waking hours doing the job that was given to me by the Cebuanos with my whole heart, with my whole mind, and with the totality of my being. And I don't think anybody could ever dispute that. Yeah. Um, in fact, uh, the joke that was in our family was that my own children who wanted to have dinner with me would have to ask for an appointment with my own secretary. <laughs> and that. it's true, it wasn't a joke really. That, that was the routine. So that, that was how I had performed. That was the standard, the killing standard that I set on myself. And uh, if I were even to rate myself with those standards, I'd say that uh, I wouldn't, I, I probably achieved a nine, but not even a perfect 10. In so your, if you would do- In our bottom line interview with Boy, Boy Abunda, I mean, I was still part of the bottom line, and we had, uh, we had an episode here in Cebu and we shot an episode with you. You, it was it was all over the news, no? Because you, boy asked you if you were the best, uh, if you think that you're the best governor of Cebu. Mm -hmm. Yes. You still think that you are the best? I think I am the best woman governor of Cebu. <laughs> 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 then if I run for if I run for governor, I still have a slot for best, best gay governor. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as I, you know, it's really, it's really all a matter of perspective. You put me on the spot and asked me to rate my, uh, you know, my successor. successor. But if you were to ask his own people, they probably rate him ten. It that all depends on what standards they'd apply. Because if it would all be about, uh, you know, shaking hands, smiling, trying to be very nice, never losing your temper. You know, keeping that uh, all very good saintly image. Or wearing your ID. And of course, Buutan, <laughs> Kinanglan Buutan, then it probably get a 10. But if we were to talk about uh, infrastructure, vision for Cebu, uh, even recognizing the fact that Cebu was once the number one province in the country, which he disputes, and that's why we're in trouble. Because if you go into that office believing that we were never number one, then this province is in trouble because you would have nothing to maintain. You would not feel a responsibility to see to it that Cebu would maintain its number one status. You mentioned infrastructure, and that's something that's very important for anyone in government to do. But uh, I have some uh, questions and points to raise about infrastructure, but before that, it's possible for the short break. Back here 
an open mic with Congresswoman Gwendolyn Garcia. So we were talking about um, infrastructure. I had, I had, I really have a question uh, pertaining to two weeks ago, three weeks ago when the president was here, and there was a presentation, uh, and the president was saying that he has given more uh, from the national budget to the province of Cebu for infrastructure projects compared to the prede his predecessor, and that's a that's a that's something that the president always says. He always compares himself to his predecessor. Um, is it true? If, and if so, uh, it seems like there were more infrastructure projects, um, roads, and uh, well, CICC, which is also controversial. If you care to explain about the CICC issue, um, but is it true that uh, the the former president did not give us much to Cebu uh, for infrastructure as opposed to this uh, president, President Aquino? First, uh, let's take away the comparisons. But uh, let us take the statement of President Aquino saying that he has uh, given much, I believe, to the province of Cebu. And I am not disputing that. In fact, in my own district, there's a lot of infrastructure projects going on through the national government, through the General Appropriations Act, which of course we also try to uh, um, defend in so far as our, our districts are concerned yes. by seeing to it that major infrastructure projects like roads, bridges, school buildings or, or classrooms, uh, flood control projects, these are um, included in the uh, appropriation for our districts. And I would, I'll be the first to say that there's really a lot of projects that are now being undertaken in the different districts of Cebu. That comes from the national government. When you say but that... effort you know from our but of course, legislators the, from the legislators because it is our responsibility to know what are needed in each of our districts Correct. and i've lobbied for a lot of projects that uh, for, for for one thing in the dot dpwh convergence which means uh, the department of tourism and the dpwh will be working together yes. to work on a project or a road a major piece of a road of uh, infrastructure that would lead to a tourist destination we are now um, presently concreting this long stretch of a road that that uh, starts at Pinamungahan and reaches uh, the Hidden Valley Resort, uh, which is in Pinamungahan, which would also um, uh, end at uh, Toledo, so that uh, it becomes a uh, easy accessibility to this particular resort, a very popular resort in the. Uh, mountainous barangay mm. of, of Pinamungahan. Okay. So there are, yes, and in fact in the 2016, uh, um, uh, well this is now first the national expenditure okay. program that has been presented to us, there are a lot of projects that are included in not just in my district but in many other districts of Cebu. Wh when you say that it seemed to you that there were projects, more projects during the time of GMA, but that's because in so far as the uh, Metro Cebu is concerned, there were major infrastructure projects that were started. Like for example, the connection between, uh, which connects to Tayud Consolacion, this Kansaga. bridge, the Kansaga, Kansaga Bridge. bridge yes. And you saw the um, total uh, paving of the south, uh, Southern Road, yes. which led all the way to Santander. Santander. Uh, Many city residents might probably not see, but these are now also being concreted. Uh, th th this used to be asphalted. This is now being concreted, concreted. by the DPWH. So let us, let us agree with the president on that, that there are in fact a lot of infrastructure projects being implemented. And I must laud the DPWH for this. They have been very professional. They have set uh, high standards in the implementation of these projects. What I must say, though, is that this present occupant of the capital could have done more, especially in terms of fighting for Cebu's interest. One very specific example. When GMR won the bidding in the PPP um, venture for building our new generation airport. terminal and improving the airport, that was an over 14 billion upfront payment All right. by the GMR. Considering that this is 
this facility, this infrastructure is located in Cebu. In Cebu. He could have lobbied with Malacanang, asking for that amount or at least a major percentage of that to be downloaded to the province so that these funds could be used for municipal projects, improving municipal roads. May I point out, national uh, government works on national roads, national bridges, national infrastructure. But we have hundreds or thousands of kilometers of municipal roads, barangay roads, barangay water systems. Our healthcare system is, uh, needs, leaves much to be desired. We have district hospitals that do not have enough equipment. The BHWs don't. Our BHWs deserve a much higher allowance than 200 pesos a month. They do not even have uniforms. You know, there's so much that could be done and spent on the local level. What if he tried but uh, didn't succeed? I didn't hear him say that he tried. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so, but there, so it is correct for the president to say that because you would know the budget uh, in the earlier years uh, mm -hmm. from the national government given to Cebu for infrastructure. Is it true that uh, he has given more to Cebu than the former president ever did? I was at the congressman then. Okay. If you would recall, during the Arroyo years, I was governor and I tried to implement projects with what we had, with what the province's resources could afford. And we tried to maximize. You know, the, the joke around was that um, for provincial projects, the contractors hardly made any money. Because, like for classrooms alone, I would ask our contractors to finish these classrooms complete with toilet, blackboard, and everything else at uh, 600,000 uh, a classroom when the DPWH standard was already running at 1.1 million. All right. So we tried to maximize our resources because I said we have to finish all of these as fast as we can because these are needed urgently. These are needed like yesterday by our school children. So I cannot presume nor even uh, intelligently uh, confirm or argue against such a statement. We can say though that the national budget increases year on year. I mean, you cannot, comp I mean, it never happens that the national budget would decrease. It always increases. In fact, for 2016, this is the biggest ever national budget that has been presented to Congress and mm -hmm. this is now running to the trillions. trillions. And so if we were to exponentially compute what is allocated for Cebu, as the national budget increases, so definitely would the allocation for Cebu. And that is, but I think that misses the whole point. Because when the president was here, that he arrived, I think, uh, about a week after the present occupant at the capital delivered his state of the province address. And I uh, read in the papers, I was told by the mayors who were listening to him, that he punctuated every sentence of his state of the province address by saying, Unya mo ingon sila wa ko'y nahimo. And so he would go on and talk of projects that he would still do, and then he would say, Unya mo ingon sila nga wa ko'y nahimo. In other words, there seems to be a lapse of present and future For tense, tense, or even past, present, and future tense. But be that as it may. Makes us a buono tense. <laughs> uh, well, are you tense? <laughs> <laughs> kind of. But uh, with that as it may, I think what he did was he tried to divert or tried to, um, you know, turn around that issue. And when the president came, he, according to some congressmen, he said, Mr. President, the people here at Cebu say you have not done anything. When actually I think what was really the issue was the people of the province of Cebu were saying he has not done anything. That's right. We have more questions for Congresswoman uh, and Governor, former Governor Gwen Garcia, but we have to again pause for uh, some reminders. Hi, we're back with Congresswoman Gwen Garcia. We were talking about uh, Cebu, the state of Cebu. Um, a while back in 2012, uh, you were before the elections, you were being considered no? uh, to run for senator. Am I right? Yeah, that's true. Yes, yes. you were being considered. Um, 
and a lot of Cebuanos, I think, were looking forward, but somehow uh, you changed your mind. Some people say it was because of the issues uh, that were being thrown against you. Like, you think, uh, I mean, are those the issues? That, well, uh, let me just clarify one thing. I changed my mind before the suspension. Okay. Had I stuck to my decision after the suspension, I'm sure I would have been number one because I was always in all of the major networks and people soon recognized me from Apari to Holo because of the suspension. All Every of night, the, you were on prime time. We were on prime time. Yes. So even now, when I walk the streets in Manila, akala ko, well, hindi makakilala sa akin, pero yung iba, <laughs> lumalapit, magpapapicture. <laughs> Maybe you needed to learn to speak uh, Tagalog more fluently before you run in 2019. I'd still continue to speak in Cebuano. So, <laughs> Magbinisaya, gil ko bisaghain. Purting daghan ng mga bisaya. Mas daghan pata kaysa mga taga, katong mga tagaw. Taga Tagalog. Oh, so yes. I think, uh, that it would be an advantage actually if you are there are uh, more Cebuano speakers the science sp uh, yes. speaking candidate I did not change my decision because of the issues Balili or CICC but I changed my mind when um, I was prevailed upon by other party leaders of One Cebu that I they needed my focus on Cebu since this time I would no longer be running for governor and uh, there would be no incumbent my brother, Pablo John, would be running yes. uh, for governor. And uh, since I was the, you know, the one that people recognized all throughout the province, they said that uh, we cannot have you... Campaigning elsewhere. Campaigning in all other places when you need to take care of Cebu first. And that's what made me change my mind. Now, um, you asked me briefly about the CICC. Yes, uh, and we talked about the state of the province. You know, if you ask me now about the state of the province, just look at the state of the CICC. It's decaying. It's practically rotting. It is the epitome of uh, inexcusable neglect. It is the personification of one's uh, complete disregard of the responsibility that his office holds. Because when you become governor of Cebu, you are expected to maintain, repair, and protect all properties of the province of Cebu. And that is a property of the province of Cebu. Even if it was built by a predecessor from an opposing party. And that makes it even more manifestly uh, negligent to the a criminal level because the anti-graft and corrupt practices, practices act. act section R. 3 letter e speaks about um, manifest uh, uh, partiality in other words in plain and simple language extreme bad faith yeah precisely because if a certain structure was built by a political opponent then he would refuse to maintain it that's okay if i built my own house and my own house starts to rot but when this is built with provincial funds and when this structure gets uh, damaged due to the earthquake due to the typhoon, typhoon. yolanda it was you know these two major catastrophes back. followed one month after the other and since this property is insured, because that is a um, that is supposed to be the, the, the way to go. Oh, it's insured, yes. You are supposed to repair it. His first uh, excuse, two years later, when I brought up this issue on why this, uh, the CICC has been left to decay and vandalized even, his answer was, well, there are cases against it, and I do not wish to tamper with evidence. The ombudsman uh, would not want us. But the ombudsman said, but you, have, you should protect it. You should repair it. You're the owner of the property. When the, oh, that was when the ombudsman said that, what did he say? His answer was, it's not my priority. Okay, but there is insurance. Uh, it, it, since it's insured, meaning they could claim. Yes, there are, of course they should claim. I don't think they did. That's what again it, another... Would you know how much the coverage is? for something like that it should be covered for the for the value that uh, it is okay. that it has okay. so that is uh, the coverage so the insurance could have fully covered uh, 
the the repair. Uh, that is a requirement, of course, of uh, course. But if it does, it may, you know. So it would uh, not have required public funds to repair it. Because, certainly not, because, because, because there's insurance. That is, if he claimed the insurance. But I see, you could you could see the the you know there was really no effort whatsoever. In fact, some people suspect there's an effort to make it even look more you know, decaying and, and rotting as it is. Maybe because it can be used against you that way. Because if it's rotten and decaying, and that is uh, something that is remembered as Gwen Garcia's project, then if it looks like that, then it would be easier as a visual aid against you. Yeah, and that would be for the visually impaired. <laughs> that would be um, a, an extremely short-sighted view. Mm -hmm in so far as a chief executive of the province would be concerned. Because right now, uh, even as I speak against it, even as people pass by the CICC, it's starting to boomerang on him. It's starting to raise questions on why did he not repair this? This, is an, this has become an embarrassment for us. It is now so ugly. And it does not only taint, as he has been trying to do, taint my image, it taints the image of Cebu. I was asking that question, you know, I asked the question, it came out a few months ago and I actually posted it on my Facebook, but I even failed to consider the insurance component. But now that I know that it's insured, it begs, you know, it begs me to ask uh, Governor Davide what happened to, I mean, why not just uh, claim? You know, the, what, it co what the insurance covers and have it repaired. That is if he's not too busy being the nice guy. <laughs> there are just so a host of other things that need to be attended to, but I suppose uh, trying to be Mr. Nice Guy takes up all his time. Well, I'd rather be effective than nice. You know? yeah. Different <laughs> folks, different strokes. You know, I, I, there's a, we have to read some questions from, from Facebook. And this is one from Eduardo uh, Miji Roldan, all the way from Manila. And this is a, something very interesting because uh, last week we saw that horrendous... Uh, I got, jam. I got stuck there. You were I there? I was coming home from Congress, uh, going back to Makati. I was stuck for about three hours. Oh my God, it was horrible. I mean, it was a horrible sight, but it was also beautiful because it looked like Christmas. For, for us here in Cebu, no? But, um, so this is very timely, and I think if you can answer this very well, people may want you to run for president. <laughs> because, okay, I'll read it from Mijiro Dan. One question only, uh, but for two different places. Para makita, makita natin ang, intele, ang intellectual side. Of course, you always see that, no? But ang intellectual, intellectual side niya on solving problems. Number one, 36 months solution. You have 36 months uh, to provide a solution to the traffic in Manila and Cebu. First of all, I'd like to thank him If you were for... in the position to effect a change in that, uh, in that aspect. Yes, I'd like to thank him for giving me 36 months. <laughs> That's three years. Yes. Because he as well recognizes that the traffic problem is a multifaceted one. It involves infrastructure, it involves law enforcement, it involves volume of the, the, cars, the, vehicles, the vehicles that use this infrastructure. And so therefore, if we were to try and uh, find a solution to the traffic problem in Manila, as well as Cebu, we would have to pursue these three different uh, areas. Mm -hmm. Law enforcement on a, let's say, um, on a short-term one, that can immediately be implemented. Because you can have all of these jeepneys that stop anywhere, when we talk of Cebu, or you can have the these buses. buses that do not use the bus the lanes, right lane. and uh, Nakiki, you know, they, they take the place along the other lanes or they stop where they want to stop. This can, this can all be uh, addressed, by, addressed by law, law enforcement. enforcement. Infrastructure. The very, and this is closely related with volume of vehicles. If we had a more efficient, in Manila, if we had a more efficient mass trans, transit system, then more people would be using our MRTs and LRTs, but as it is, it's gone from bad to worse. And so, as more and more people daily suffer trying to get a ride on more and more trains that uh, bog down, our car companies are offering 
better and better deals yes. for them to or no no or even to buy a car yeah for a down payment I, I i'm told for a down payment of nine thousand, you can already have a car and so for those that could afford they'd rather get their own vehicles and that adds at least to the volume because some people i think you know at least if you're stuck in traffic at least you're stuck in an air-conditioned uh, space precisely so first of all we will have to improve the mass transit system that we have in Manila and install one here in Cebu. As we try to do that, uh, of course, given the systems of government, the Procurement Act, the, and all of these other things, there, uh, the, the, this will take time, you know, as it is. And it will cause more traffic when you build it. And in the meantime, no, but uh, no, procurement, it, procurement of, yeah. of better, of, of um, more cars. Or, yeah. pro, no, procure, procurement of more trains. Trains. Yeah, but would, as we build us. the infrastructure that supports it, the building will actually time. So it's really congest the, the area even more. The enforcement <laughs> for that aspect there. Area. Now, as as more and more cars uh, ply these uh, routes, you will have to be able to control the volume. That number coding system does not work. You know, I know of people who just change their, their plate numbers or cover it altogether. It doesn't work. But what we need to do is somehow to enforce a law that would make it more expensive for vehicle owners to maintain seven or eight year old cars. Because as these cars Apply these routes. You have this spectacle of them, you know, um, getting bogged down in, in in the roads itself, causing even more, more traffic. traffic. So there has to be a system that we can enforce, where um, older cars will uh, require a heavier penalty, penalty, so to speak, and even acquisition of more cars might acquire yes. even uh, a stiffer penalty. That is how we must address the volume of cars that continue to ply these routes. And maybe also when there's rain, for example, if there's torrential rain, bad weather, maybe the MRT can extend its operating hours. Let for, me just for... tell you something. The MRT is really palpak right now. I mean, there are so many trains that, that, that are not working. So it's not even the question of extending. It's even it's just a question of being there mm -hmm. during the normal hours so that this could address the need by all of these commuters. So I was talking about infrastructure. I was talking about uh, law enforcement and uh, volume of cars. And above all of these, above and beyond all of these, is a political leadership with a political will and a vision. That is truly the overriding and all-embracing yes. requirement for us to be able to solve this traffic to mess. ease this traffic mess and not just this because there are several other problems that are creeping up on us thank you for that uh, you know unfortunately as ever time is uh, is a finite uh, resource and as much as I would like to ask more questions because as always it's a pleasure talking to you our time is up, but I'll ask you one question. We started with love life. You're single. The president is single. <laughs> what if President Noinoy Aquino asks you out on a date? Would you go out on a date with President Noinoy Aquino? <laughs> Silence means yes. That's what they say. I wasn't going to be silent. <laughs> I was thinking about my answer. In the unlikely event that President Aquino would ask me out on a date, he's the president of the country, after all. Who can turn down the president? But since, as you said, I am single, and being single and the eldest of the family, and having always respected my parents, I would certainly go out with him, chaperoned by my parents. <laughs> well, that would be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Congresswoman Gwen Garcia, and good luck to your 
prospects uh, for 2016 and beyond. This has been Mike Lopez. Uh, thank you, Lord Maturan, for my <laughs> for my suit. And thank you to our beautiful ladies uh, and gentlemen uh, who are with us in the audience. Until next week, this has been Mike Lopez and you were you just watched Open Mic with Gwen Garcia. Thank you.